Well, the polls have closed in Victoria and the Labour Party led by Daniel Andrews has been returned for a second term. We've monitored election commitments across the course of the campaign and this is the Infrastructure Red Book. Population growth and infrastructure were key battleground issues in the state election and it appears Labour's strong infrastructure record proved crucial in its return to government. The Victorian government's prudent financial management and the proceeds from its asset recycling programme has enabled Daniel Andrews and Tim Pallas to fund an impressive infrastructure investment programme over the next four years. In the last week of the election campaign, Labour announced that they will increase the debt to GSP ratio cap from 6 to 12%. Off the back of sound fiscal settings and the asset recycling programme, this will allow the Andrews government to fully fund a range of commitments, including the $15.8 billion North East Link. The state election saw a major focus on transport infrastructure with both sides providing bipartisan support for a number of keystone projects throughout the campaign. The Andrews government committed billions of dollars to major road and rail projects aimed at reducing congestion and improving public transport links. These projects included $6.6 .6 billion for 25 additional level crossings to be delivered by 2025, $5 billion for the Melbourne Airport Rail Link, a commitment that was matched by the Commonwealth Government, $750 million for the Dandenong to Cranbourne duplication, and $530 million for Stage 2 of the Hurstbury duplication. This is on top of $300 million in planning money for the Suburban Rail Loop and a further $100 million towards the Western Rail Plan. Schools and hospitals were also a big winner in this election. Over the course of the campaign, the Victorian Government committed significant funding to a number of social infrastructure projects, including $1.5 billion for a new 500-bed hospital in Footscray, $850 million for 100 new schools over the next eight years, with 45 of those schools committed to be delivered by 2022, $1.68 billion over 10 years for new and upgraded kindergartens, and $562 million to redevelop Frankston Hospital. The energy policy debate in Victoria was a major dividing line during the election. In a bid to provide relief to consumers, Labour announced the introduction of a default energy retail offer, alongside other reforms recommended by the Thwaites Review. The Andrews government has also committed to legislating an increase in the Victorian renewable energy target, the VREP, to 50% by 2030. Labour's focus on renewables was supported by the establishment of Solar Victoria, which will administer a new $1.24 billion fund called Solar Homes over the next 10 years. Well, thanks for watching the Infrastructure Red Book. If you like these videos and are interested in getting more detailed analysis on the infrastructure sector, you can subscribe to our pipeline updates via infrastructurepipeline.org. Member companies have received a comprehensive Red Book analysis today. And if your company is interested in becoming a member of Infrastructure Partnerships Australia, head to infrastructure.org.au forward slash membership. See you next time.